In the heart of Naples lies Campi Fligre, a slumbering supervolcano with a history of devastation. As the ground trembles and earthquakes increase, scientists ponder if it will awaken again, unleashing a catastrophic eruption that could plunge the world into darkness, tsunamis, and a global winter. The stakes are high, and the fate of humanity hangs in the balance. Centuries ago, the once vibrant Roman town of Pompeii was shaken to its foundation and reduced to a wasteland. The culprit? Smoke, lava, and ash are better still a volcano. An hour's drive away and centuries later, the serene, picturesque town of Naples sets on the same premises as it faces the possibility of being wiped off the face of the earth. However, this time, it could go beyond just Napoli and plunge the Earth into a prolonged winter, because this time we're looking at a volcano of larger proportions, a supervolcano. Once upon a time in a distant era, roughly some 39,000 years ago, when the world was still finding its shape, in an obscure part of the Earth, something brewed beneath the ground. An unknown mountain bellowed, quivered, and in a matter of days ruptured, revealing the Earth's boiling, scalding, and unforgiving core. This eruption is what we call today a supervolcano, and the dimensions were mind-blowing. You see, the supervolcano pumped out a mind-numbing 60 cubic miles of ash into the atmosphere, which blotted out the face of the sun for months or possibly years. We're talking about vast amounts of ash that covered the whole of Eastern Europe, North Africa, and Western Asia. As the ash settled, a death dropping drastically and plunging the earth into an unplanned and prolonged dark winter. The mountain's wrathful explosion, consisting of sulfur dioxide, fluoride, and chlorine, painted the water bodies. While the air swallowed loads of toxic materials that choked the very essence of life, exterminating whole species and badly maiming the sturdy who withstood its fury. In fact, it's believed that the remaining Neanderthals on Earth at this time were unfortunate to be caught in the crosshair of this cataclysmic event. Unable to get adequate shelter and warmth from the biting cold, they shivered and choked to death until there were none left. Centuries passed, and the world moved on from the devastating effect of this event. However, in 1538, the serene and picturesque Roman-era village of Tripogole was violently shaken from its slumber by the earth beneath it. The ground trembled, quaked, and quivered before vomiting its hot and unforgiving bile, eventually burying the village under a muddy torrent of hot lava and ash. This catastrophic event left a permanent memorial that stands to this day, the Monte Nuovo. Now the one thread that ties these two pieces together is that both eruptions, though separated by thousands of years, happened in the same area. The Valangrian fields, in Italian Campi Filegre, meaning burning fields. Nestled in the west of the picturesque Italian town of Naples, this area consists of 24 craters and volcanic structures, but most of these structures are carefully tucked underwater, producing hydrothermal activities felt in the neighboring towns. While this volcanic flashpoint holds a significant place in the history of the world, it also shares a piece of Roman mythology because it houses the Sofaterra crater, and it continuously bellows gases, a place the Romans believed to be the home of Vulcan, the god of fire. But why should we care about a mythical volcanic site that has been dormant for thousands of years? For one, the sleeping underground fireball seems to be rousing itself after 500 years of peaceful rest. In fact, this cauldron of hot burning lava has been stirring underground since the mid-20th century, and these activities have reached a crescendo at several intervals ever since. So the volcano tipped in the 1950s, the 1970s, and the 1980s. In 2005, the ground in this area entered another cycle of restlessness, but instead of petering away like the others, it seems this one is building up to something because since the ground below the Pozzoli, a small town nestled on the volcano's roof, has risen significantly. So at a yearly increase of 10 centimeters, the ground has risen over four meters since the 1950s. Beyond this persistent rise, another proof of this awakening is the sheer number of earthquakes the area has seen 
since 1950. Interestingly, in April alone, they witnessed a mind-blowing 600 earthquakes, a figure which is far more than the total quakes ever recorded in the region until this point. So what can we make of all these rather crazy details? Well, to understand the present stirring of this underground cauldron itching to explode to the surface, we have to look to the past. Scientists studying the area developed a mathematical model that accurately estimates the flow of magma below the surface. Now, this model relies heavily on a set of data that includes geological, archaeological, and historical data on the area's past activities. When you put all this information together, it becomes clear that the previous eruptions followed some clearly defined patterns. First off, the eruptions came after a period of intense deformation of the ground and this usually starts from Bazzoli before moving to the area where the Earth would eventually give way for the bubbling magna to hit the surface. Meanwhile, the deformation has always produced an elevation of 20 meters before giving away to an eruption. Next is that volcanic gases will seep into the crust beneath Camp Filigre's surface. This leads to intense stretching, warping, and slipping of the ground before unleashing the earthquake. While the ground goes through this topsy-turvy period, a vast amount of gas accumulates beneath the ground. So when the ground eventually gives way, a column of magna four miles deep is unleashed to the surface. In the end, after the turbulence will come a period of calm, and the area will eventually return to its position as a dormant volcano, waiting for the beginning of another cycle. So with everything going on according to the playbook, Two important questions come to mind. Is Campi Flagre gearing up to hit the Earth with another super volcano? And what would it look like for the Earth to experience a volcano of such magnitude? While every factor indicating that this volcano is structurally weaker, it still doesn't mean that an eruption is imminent. In fact, researchers from the observatory place the likelihood of it going off again as a realistic possibility. When faced with the question of the possibility of another eruption, Chris Kilburn, the lead volcanologist in the University College of London, expressed the same view as the local researchers. He said, we're moving closer to rupture. However, this does not mean an eruption is guaranteed. It may open a crack through the crust, but the magma still needs to be pushed up at the right location for an eruption to occur. We'll have to adjust our procedures for estimating the chances of new routes being opened or magna or gas to reach the surface. The study is the first of its kind to forecast rupture at an active volcano. It marks a step change in our goal to improve forecast for eruptions worldwide. Moving on from the likelihood of a huge eruption of the scale capable of causing a global winter, scientists have laid down two conditions necessary. First off, for the volcano to blow, gases must build up more rapidly than they can escape. Next is that the magma needs to have enough speed to move rapidly through the crust where a crack is formed. These conditions are clear enough, but not straightforward in practice. You see, scientists can only tell if these conditions were met when the eruption takes place. So we're still faced with a plethora of what ifs and maybes, including the fact that if it erupts, it has a 50-50 chance of either being a small explosion or a large explosion. This is the same for all volcanoes that have gone through the prolonged period of quiet, so nothing is really sure. It may as well settle into a continuous cycle of rising and subsiding like other volcanoes around the world. It is possible that the volcano would become dormant perpetually. However, while it still remains a realistic possibility, that it could erupt again, we have to face the fact that it is still a supervolcano in theory. You see, all we can rely on at this point are conjectures and historical data. The truth remains that no one alive lived through the previous eruption, so we can only wish that it was just another low magnitude earthquake. But what if by a stretch of the imagination we are faced with another supervolcano? What would it look like? In recent history, the eruption of Mount Vesia stands as a well-known volcano with chilling and devastating effects. The boiling cauldron of red-hot lava hit the surface without any warning, or would I say without anyone heeding its warning. It hit the Roman city of Pompeii quite hard, 
incinerating and suffocating thousands of people as they tried to escape its red-hot fury. However, as bad as this sounds already, it's nothing more than a pimple on the back of a sleeping giant, which is a super volcano. You see, volcanoes are measured on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, with at least one, and the highest is eight. Now, a super volcano is on the other end of the scale, at either a seven or an eight, with a volume of deposits greater than a thousand cubic kilometers. The eruption that wiped out Pompeii was a VEI-5 with a meager 1.1 cubic kilometers of materials deposited. When weighed side by side with the devastating potential, if this one hits the surface of the Earth, we're talking about the devastation of unimaginable proportions. But let's drill down for a moment to find out what would happen if the next eruption was similar to the previous one. First off, roughly 500,000 people who call the area around the supervolcano home would be a direct hit. So the most vibrant metropolis of Naples would be reduced to a mass of ash and hot lava. That would be the end of Napoli and even Europe as we know it. The next thing we have to contend with is the molten rock and volcanic gases that would be launched high into the stratosphere. Because what would follow this would plunge the Earth into unimaginable depths of misery. This could lead to 100-foot high tsunamis that could wipe out coastal towns around the world. The accompanying sulfur and ash would spread into the atmosphere, obscuring the sun and plunging the earth into a global winter that could last for years. With sulfur in the atmosphere, acid rains are inevitable, so this would do its bit in sucking out the very essence of the earth by wiping out crops and wildlife alike, eventually plunging the world into unimaginable hunger. As a result, there would be widespread riots and migration. Apart from sulfur, fluorine is another gas with an unimaginable power to wreak havoc if released by an eruption. This deadly gas, when unleashed in sufficient quantities, would also wipe out plant life. Animals would not be spared because it would lead to widespread fluorisis and death. Sounds a lot like one of Hollywood's creations, right? Well, while speculations are rife, we still have many unknowns to figure out. The risk of a supervolcano that can alter life as we know it is still valid. Thanks for watching again. Like stories like these? Make sure to click the subscribe button before it disappears. See you in the next one.